Hey guys, so Nikita has just done a podcast over at Twitch and it's been quite a long one. They've shown us some stuff, give us some insight um, into what's going to be coming at the end of this year. He did speak about Arena. He actually mentioned when Arena was actually coming out, funny enough. But he did mention uh, quite a bit about the next patch for Taki. I'm not going to cover really anything to do with Arena during this podcast or this, this video. Um, that can be for a separate video. Arena for me is... I don't really care much for it. I care more about the game that we're currently playing, which is Taki. So there is five promo codes. You have Ground Zero, which gives you an injector case. The next one is I Am Mighty, which gives you a trooper, a G28, and an M4. The next one is Armor Plates, which is an M1, AVS, and two ULAX. After that is Rich and Expensive, which is a few stims being Probatel, Zagustin, Melodonin, Trimbadol, and ETG. And then finally, code is Left Hand Head Eyes which is going to be an Acer, Intel folder, and some fuel. Uh, at the start of the video, this might be jumbled around a little bit. You'll see some stuff in the background, which is actually going to be from the podcast itself. So starting off, 1.14 will be wipe. This will be at the end of the year. Um, he didn't mention the specific date. We're going to be having technical updates all the way through until the end of November, as well as there's going to be a new matchmaking system that's been implemented which is going to be decreasing match times. I play on EU and on US servers, mainly being the East Coast servers. And I will say, because he did say it's already implemented on some servers, the East Coast US servers, I seem to get into raids in literally about two minutes to three minutes, where the EU does still take around about five to seven minutes. He did mention it as well as there's going to be a new launch update, which is going to have another game allocated to it. I guess if you play like you know battle.net or something like that or the call of duty where you can select different ones um it's going to be kind of the same thing and the two games are going to be eft and arena now onto a few stuff with um the actual game itself unity 2021 is no longer coming it's going to be uni unity 2023 and it's actually delayed until 2024 he said that the uni 2023 is so much more better than uni 2021 of course, a delay is a delay. What can you do? We haven't had the update for so long. <laughs> he says it really doesn't matter either when it comes to the update. So I guess we're just going to have to wait and see. Um, EOD won't actually be available after December 30th, 2023. So if you are waiting to think about getting EOD, that is the time to get it. You're going to get yourself the Gamma Container and all the awesome cool stuff like that. There's also a recoil um, rework. Um, so the way it's going to work is they're planning to make it live for patch 14. But if you are part of the ETS, he did say it's going to be live on the ETS very soon. Um, another thing is you can move shoulders. So um, our PMC, if you don't know, actually shoots from his right eye. He's also right-handed, so he holds it to his right shoulder. They haven't implemented the full swing over to the left side as well as the left eye. I'm assuming it's going to be left eye um, when you shoot. Um, so what they kind of done is they kind of like swing the gun to the left so that you can kind of angle it around the corner. It's not really that great because it's still blind firing. You can't actually ADS with it, um, but you can still, um, you know, have your gun on your left shoulder, but not like fully like pinned up to it. Um, yeah, they also added the ability that they've added um, a overhand blind fire. Uh, That's actually still in the game. And they've added a right hand blind fire as well, which is pretty good. They mentioned that voice lines are going to be coming for the bosses as well as the are going to get a radio in soon. So you can talk in game over long distances. So we have a brand new map to Tarkov. It's called Ground Zero and it's actually the center of the Tarkov city. And it is actually where the Terror Group HQ is based. It is level locked up until level 15 to 20. Um, but... You can actually join it at any stage if you're a scav. So this is obviously for newer players. Nikita did also mention that there's not a full amount of loot here. So in my opinion, it's basically just kind of learning the game mechanics, doing a little PvP or PvE when it comes to these scavs. He also mentioned that it's a not very big map either. Having a look at what the screenshot, because it actually shows a map um, on the screen at the end of this video. In my opinion, I actually think it's from a boiler side of customs all the way up to maybe construction area. That could be the kind of the, the size of it, like from um, yeah, from boiler side, maybe up to dorms. That kind of size would be round about the kind of size that I feel like it's going to be sitting at, in my opinion, just from what I'm looking at. Um, but he did actually mention there's not a lot of loot and it's not very big either. 
Um, streets is going to get its expansion, new indoor areas, optimization in general. And there's also going to be a BTR that you can hire, move around from one spot to another. You can actually extract loot with it as well. And um, you can only do it one time, by the way, as well as it can be hired for fire support. There is a new boss. I can't really understand what he's saying. I think it's like Kilmatite or something along the lines of that one. So we're going to get another boss when it comes to streets. So Caban isn't going to be by himself. There is achievements now. Um, so the more that you play, you got like Snowball, all that kind of funky stuff, like in Sturman. Um, but you do actually have achievements, which is a really cool thing. And they're going to be new achievements on each patch and update they do, as well as they don't actually reset either. So it's something that's going to be on your profile for a very long time, which is pretty cool. Um, to go with the achievements, you're also going to have the ability to have player profiles. Now, when it comes to player profiles, it's a really cool looking thing where you can actually show all of your stats. You can also see your scav stats now from your main PMC stat page. But when it comes to your player profiles, you can link your favorite guns down at the bottom of your profiles. I think he said three or we saw three and we can actually share those presets with other people. So if you've got a very favorite gun or a meta build or something like that that can be kind of showcased, you can then give it to your friends and you can actually share it that way. I think there's only three. I'm not so sure there's only three each time he showed it off. But it'd be kind of cool if you can get all of the gunsmith stuff done. If that is the case, um, I will, you know, make my name a bit more public and you guys can add me in and copy the gunsmith stuff or whatever. He also mentioned that there's now a Hall of Fame special place in the hideout. There isn't really any footage of it. You can kind of see the little star icon when it was inside the labs when he was showcasing the gun for the player profiles now what's the point of having a hall of fame if you can't show it to anyone so i'm assuming this is just me guessing that we have the ability to actually join other hideouts which is hopefully going to come soon at some point um another great big thing is shoreline's get an update it'll be in december there's no details no video no nothing um, but he said there is going to be something coming later on. Another cool quality of life is quick load. So you can specifically load up ammos and magazines in a certain way, which is going to be cool time saving. So you can like do a multi stack so you can have traces and then all the other kind of stuff. He also mentioned that Lightkeeper service is going to be coming as well. So Sirachi support. I'm assuming you're going to get Sirachi to back you up. The truth with the cultist. Now that's, that's a... Uh, that's a cool one and a rogue support as well now one of the biggest things that we're going to be getting into is vaulting showcase he mentioned that you can almost vault over every single obstacle in the game which is absolutely awesome no more getting stuck on that random branch inside of woods that you're trying to waddle along and you just can't move but vaulting is something that's going to be really interesting i wonder how it's going to go down when it comes to the rats in this game and the cool spots that they find already and now it's going to be even more improved the armor plating system is also going to be implemented. There's going to be plate carry helmets with new hit areas as well on the head. So like your head's going to have its own individual like spot as well as it's going to be the real spot. So it's not some random hitbox that might cover over a certain area. If you shoot on the groin, you're actually going to get hit on the groin. It's like that certain thing as well. He also mentioned that it can have different levels of armor plating. So I'm hoping that when you buy armor, it's going to come with its stock in there, but they might actually have the ability to upgrade your armor to have another plate inside of it for different, you know, levels and all that kind of stuff. Um, armor will deplete from errors like the slap plate that's already in the game. Um, and it covers the exact points, which is what I just said. So I'm hoping that you can just right click and just repair all. If not, it's going to be an absolute pain in the booty to actually repair your entire your, all of your armor it's going to be an absolute pain um he also mentioned a few things um so we're going to be getting some new guns and 9a91 um which actually use valve bullets so i'm assuming it's also foldable as well i'm assuming it's pretty much built for rats let's be honest valve bullets are pretty powerful and it's it's an smg and then you've got the vac 94 which is a silenced and it also used the valve bullets the 9x39 so i'm pretty sure these are going to start to be um devastating inside the game another two guns we're going to be getting is the rpd it's going to be belt fed with 7.62x39 which is the bp ammo and the pp ammo as well as the rpdn which i'm assuming the n stands for dovetail because when you have an n on the ak-74 it means it's got a dovetail mount 
which is really cool, as well as a six spear and an updated SKS. Something that he wanted to end off is that there has been 10,000 accounts banned in one month. Um, they're actually actively looking for how these how these get exploited as well and basically block them. I mean, like you would do anyway when it comes to going against the, the hackers in this game. But guys, that's the entire thing. Again, like I said, I didn't really cover anything with Arena. They played it a few times. Um, I'm still a bit 50-50 when it comes to Arena, in my personal opinion. But anyway, that is everything that I had found inside of the video. Or in the podcast, I should say. You guys have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video. Also, if you're looking for someone to play with or you need help with a task, we do have a helpline, which is like the Sherpa system over at toc.gg, which is the outcast. We also run some tournaments and all that kind of fun stuff. So don't forget to head over there as well. An absolute huge thank you to everyone giving me feedback in the channel, liking and commenting. It helps a huge amount when it comes to this channel. And also thank you to all of my channel supporters over on Twitch, YouTube and Patreon. You guys are absolutely awesome. And especially a big thank you to the Riven King for your continued support.